it's my feeling that uh, perhaps the players could benefit from having the capability or the availability of having you know, skilled people there to take care of them. So I made the proposal to the United States Handball Association that I'd, we do it on trial basis up in Baltimore since pro proximity was so good from the Naval Academy. And I got a number of, there's about six of them, in different individuals who volunteered to come up. They were all functioned as trainers at the Naval Academy and split up and worked the, the time frame involved at the Nationals of Baltimore. Uh, based upon the, the players' response to how well they liked having trainers around, uh, put the proposal to the United States Handball Association to put together a sports medicine team for the USHA. And uh, next year it, it fell into place right down in Tucson. Ironically, at that, that time frame, they just uh, could financially uh, state that it was okay for them to uh, sponsor myself and one trainer, and that was Ray Cronister with me down in Tucson in 85. Unfortunately, we showed the need for two because Ray just couldn't be available the, the 15, 16 hours a day. And the players needed somebody 15, 16 hours a day. So after they saw the worth of Ray uh, in Tucson, the USHA agreed to have both Ray and Kevin uh, starting in Houston in 86. And we've been uh, doing it since 1986. Well, primarily, uh, I work with uh, the younger population. 18 through uh, 23, 24 years of age. But uh, here you have to gear yourself toward the older athlete and the senior athlete. Uh, they do get problems that are similar to the younger athlete, but as you get older, you run into a flexibility problem. The recuperative powers are not as keen as the younger individual, and you have to be able to realize that. Plus, as you get older, you get into the uh, degenerative process. So you have to kind of be tuned into that, too. We use a lot of ice due to the fact it uh, gives good analgesic relief, so it kills the pain. Uh, it stops the uh, bleeding and uh, any cell tissue that's going on, it stops the or decreases the metabolic rate and um, prevents uh, cell damage or more cell damage, actually. Well, the only thing I'd like to add is, again, to encourage players to do two things. Number one, to be in better physical shape before they try to come to the Nationals. And I don't, I'm not saying that sitting here saying like I'm, a, I'm a specimen of physical conditioning. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to come here and you want to do well, you're going to do your best by being the one individual that's in the best physical condition in your division. Uh, certainly, it doesn't show so much on Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but come down to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's a matter of attrition due to physical conditioning. And a lot of, a lot of the overstress problems, again, as I said, are associated with the factor. The individual just doesn't get to the ball fast enough to properly position themselves. I think that if players do that, properly physically condition themselves before coming to the Nationals, I think that if players are smartly learned, that they should wear lensed eye guards to prevent any eye injuries, that they can do everything that they can to protect themselves from problems that are associated with handball. How long have you been playing the game? I started when I was uh, 15, well, let's say uh, 13 years old. So I've been playing for 24 years. So to me, uh, like I said before, Hembo is, if not the most important thing, is one of the most important things in my life. You're a, you've been on the Pro Tour for how many years? Uh, 16 years. Do you plan to continue on the Pro Tour? At this point, I don't know exactly what's going to happen on the, on the Pro Tour. We have uh, another five months uh, before we go into the, the next season. Uh, this time, I'm thinking no more Pro Tour for Nadi Alvarado. But for the next Nationals, I'm thinking that I'll be there. What about a seniors pro tour? <laughs> no. Uh, I don't want to say anything uh, you know, about the, you know, the older players or elder players. But I feel, and this is my personal view of, on, on this point, is that I've been playing on the pro tour on the top level. And it's not demeaning to play in other divisions or anything, but I, I kind of got used to playing on, on the Pro Tour, you know, playing against uh, Silveiras and the Bikes and against Fred Lewis. So for me, it would be very tough to go into the senior division and not uh, being able to play in the Open. So 
if I'm going to keep playing handball, it'll be for fun. Uh, no more pro tour if I decide to in the next two months. But playing in the seniors, I don't think so. Nutty, you're 36 years old. You still play a great game at handball. You're still ranked among the top four players in the world. How do you account for that? Well, uh, there's a lot of dedication uh, before these nationals. I did a lot of training. Of course, I couldn't play the way I wanted to play here in this tournament. And I feel good playing this caliber and playing still in the top four. I feel real good about it. But does not, that doesn't take anything by losing. If I lose, it's still, I can still say that this is the worst tournament I had, even that I got to the top four. And I know that a lot of people out there that would like to be in the semifinals, and I was. But I got used to winning. I got used to winning, and I just can, can go on and, and losing in tournaments. So to me, getting to the semifinals is great, but still losing, that doesn't make my tournament. How would you like to be remembered among the handball fraternity after you stop playing professionally? Uh, people tend to forget, but I, obviously I left some uh, titles there so people can remember me. And if they're going to remember me, I would like to be as uh, somebody that put a lot of time in handball which I have. What about your son, Nadi Jr.? Handball seems to be in his veins too. Yes, uh, fortunately, uh, he decided to play uh, handball four years ago, and he's doing uh, real good. He's in the finals. Uh, today he's playing the doubles with another uh, superstar, uh, David Chapman, and they'll be playing, and both of them, their age combined is not even as old as mine. Uh, theirs is 34 and I'm 36. So I can see that Nadi's got a, a, a long future in handball and I'm very proud of him and I'm glad that he decided to play and I just want him to do the best that he can. What's the most important thing you told Nadi Jr. when he started to play handball? When Nadi started to play handball, uh, it was, and I'd like to emphasize on this because he decided to play on his own. I never told him, okay, it's time to start playing, you are 15 years old, and I never said that. And he went in, he started to play on his own, and to me that's the best thing that I ever done to him, because I did not tell him to go into handball and play some, uh, you know, the sport that we love. So he decided on his own, so to me that's probably the most important thing that I didn't do anything, and it was hard, that by not doing anything, that's how he got in. Just one last question. What about your wife and your daughter also play handball? Yeah, isn't that, isn't that great? I mean, my whole family, uh, we're playing, we all go, we have three cars, so we get, you know, everybody's got a different schedule. I'm talking when we're practicing at the corner club in Victorville where we live. So we are all always together. Uh, the whole family is always in one place. And after we play, we go have a pizza or we go somewhere else and have a, you know, good dinner, and so because of handball, our family has been very close. Uh, of course, we fight, and uh, the kids fight, and I, my wife and I, we have arguments, but handball is keeping us together. There's always been a group that wanted to play, the wives, the girlfriends, the, the, the gals that were around the handball players. As you probably know, this is not, it's a very unique group. This is a family. At this national championships, half the reason people show up are to see their friends, play a little handball, watch some of the best players in the world. There's no sport that has the camaraderie that this sport does. And the women saw this as well as yeah, they want to play. They see a sport, they want to play. But the ball was too heavy. They tried it. Not very many of them could do it without hurting themselves. So a new ball was invented, a lighter weight ball. It's a great ball, and this is how they got started. The first 20 years I taught handball at the University of Texas, I had two women ever sign up for handball, and they quit after a few weeks. 
Uh, in the last 10 years, I've probably had 300 women sign up for handball. And they keep playing. It doesn't hurt their hands anymore. So the ball was a big difference. Well, it was one of the only sports that was left in PE when I was in college, and I didn't even know what handball was. And women, this was in 1979, and women were just getting started. So the, the competition wasn't real high. So therefore, I kind of grew with all the other women, and we were all starting at the same level. We didn't come in, and somebody was 10 times better. I, uh, the camaraderie that is shared amongst the women is something that you won't find in any other sport. I, um, you know, I can't see the top two tennis players in the world sharing a hotel room before their big final match the next day. But yet, all these girls get along so well, and we're all just best friends. And you know, we, we're as competitive as any other sport when we're in the court, but we get off the court and we go share a beer with our friend. It's an opportunity to, uh, to build a, a wonderful relationship with a number of people that share the same goals and ideals as myself, and, and although we all come from different walks of life. Uh, we have exceptional uh, female athletes, and they deserve to have a pro tour. So we need people to get interested. We need ladies to start playing. We also need kids uh, for our sport. So for the ladies, I wish them well, and I think they can do it. question is kind of think of it as if uh, uh, I'm not here. So you kind of think, so it actually, actually why well, it's important for you to win the Nationals this year. Don't say, well, it's because I want my dad to win. I want you to say, I'm, I'm, it's very, it's important that I win the Nationals this year for such and such. You understand? Kind of repeat the question when you answer it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is my first question is, uh, why is it important for you to win the Nationals this year as opposed to last year? Well, I just didn't have as, oh, sorry, you're, you're showing yeah. This year is uh, different from last year, important for different reasons that I win the tournament because uh, I haven't had the success I had during the year last year and this will kind of be redemption for me. You can salvage an entire season by winning this because this is what everyone looks at as the main event. Okay. Um, I don't want to jinx you, but uh, how's your leg feel? It's, I mean, it, I, I'm sure it'll be loose. It's tight right now. I'll stretch it out. And go from there. It hasn't bothered me. I felt it the last three matches, but it hasn't affected me at all. I just, it, it hurts me off the court. When I'm fired up, I don't feel a thing. We want to put that in the tape. We want to give you an excuse. 
Okay. Well, let's talk a bit. You know, now, Toddy's not here. You won't hear about this today. <laughs> you know, sir, you know, no one's going to tell you. So, tell me a little bit about what you're planning to do uh, in terms of maybe using the glass or which off plane is offhand or stronghand or whatever. I think uh, to beat Toddy, I'm going to have to do a couple of things well. He's he's steady now, like like a top player, and it won't it won't be a matter of finding one thing that works. I'm going to come out full speed as offensive as possible, milk that as long as I can, start mixing speeds a little, mix hooks, change directions and serve. I think the way to beat him is to throw a little of everything at him, you know, because he'll, he'll adjust. You can't score three or four points in a row on him doing the same thing, so just keep throwing different things at him. Uh, Todd is a former, your former doubles partner, uh, and uh, is there any, any kind of uh, ambivalence when you play as a former doubles partner? No, not at all. I and mean, we've played, we've played two tournaments together, and I completely understand why he didn't want to play this year. He was last year. Everyone told me not to play doubles, you know, to give singles the best shot, and I'm too stubborn to listen. It was good advice. But yeah, I see how close I came to losing the singles. Uh, he's taken the advice and he's going after the singles. I don't blame him for that at all. Why don't you talk a little bit about um, what's going to happen after the Nationals, I think. And, and again, give me a full answer on this as far as after the Nationals, I'm going to go with Pete and that kind of thing. Talk a little bit about the, uh, the next month. Okay, uh, the Monday after Nationals, we're going to, Pete and I are going to start a five-week tour. We're going to Something like 28 cities, starting in Detroit, roll on up the East Coast, down to the Southeast, and crisscross the Midwest, and uh, end up in uh, New Mexico for our week-long camp. We'll be doing a couple hours a night. He'll be doing clinics. I'll be doing demonstrations. Just trying to promote the game a little. Um, tell me a little bit about um, if you've done anything differently to prepare for this tournament versus the one last year. Like that, you did altitude training, that kind of stuff. Yeah, a little more emphasis on aerobic work this year. I've building up my wind. I've done a lot of sprint and explosion work in the past, which I didn't sacrifice at all. I did that also. But this year on my off days, I made an effort to do really 30 minutes to an hour of a good steady aerobic, like at 75% capacity, like hiking up hills, things like that. So that's a little more, I think I'm a little more rounded out this year. That's how you got that stress fracture, huh? That's what they say. <laughs> I, yeah, it uh, didn't pay off, but that's true. Give me one of those answers I was clear on. Uh, if, if, it, if, it, if you don't, I know that, that your father wasn't at the National Flash for right. Blood and Achilles. So let's, right. let's bring that up, OK? okay. Um, and, um, you know how you how you hope your dad's gonna be able to. Is he here? Yes. So he's gonna he's gonna be able to watch. Oh yes. Okay. So let's just give me an answer on that. Or, uh, a statement on the importance of winning. Okay. Well, an additional reason would be that uh, you know my father tore his Achilles last year and he had to go home on Thursday for surgery, so he didn't get to be a part of really the biggest moment of my life. So we'll make this the biggest moment of my life and have him be a part of it. Question is, is how did the how did your sports scheme team get started? Uh, well, for about 20 plus years, I uh, played handball actively, and then uh, due to the arthritis I had in my right hip, I slowly took myself away from the game. And uh, actually, I quit my involvement with the game, i.e., not playing anymore, not seeing any players I used to know real well, uh, solely because no reason to go to the clubs anymore because I couldn't play. And that was back in the uh, uh, early 80s. 
And uh, ironically, a, an individual I used to play handball with in the early 70s uh, got a hold of me, and he was having an elbow problem. And he came out to the Naval Academy where I was at and said, hey, uh, you know, how about my elbow? How do, how do I take care of it, et cetera? And then he asked me about getting involved with USHA again. And I said, well, I don't know what ways I could do it. And he says, well, how about writing articles for the magazine? And I said, that sounds fine to me. So I made the proposal to Bob Peters, et cetera, to uh, start writing some articles in the magazine. Thought we might be able to give some information that would be helpful to the players. And then uh, it so became that, uh, ironically, that shortly after they agreed to accept the articles on a monthly basis or every other month basis, uh, that the Nationals were scheduled to be held up in Baltimore. And in my mind, I kept thinking, like, well, there's got to be something more I could do for the players. And uh, I sat back and I thought, well, gee whiz, you know, here I'm, at, I'm here at the Naval Academy. We have 35 uh, varsity sports and uh, all intramural sports, and we always have trainers taking care of the athletes. And here's the, uh, you know, once a year get together the, of the finest handball players in the world, and they've got absolutely nobody to take care of them. And of course, all injuries are going to have injury problems and overstress problems and injuries. And uh, it's my feeling that uh, perhaps the players could benefit from having the capability or the availability of having, you know, skilled people there to take care of them. So I made the proposal to the United States Handball Association that I'd, we do it on trial basis up in Baltimore since pro proximity was so good from the Naval Academy. And I got a number of, there's about six of them, in different individuals who volunteered to come up. They were all functioned as trainers at the Naval Academy and split up and worked the, the time frame involved at the Nationals of Baltimore. Uh, based upon the, the players' response to how well they liked having trainers around, uh, put the proposal to the United States Handball Association to put together a sports medicine team for the USHA. And uh, next year it, it fell into place right down at Tucson. Ironically, that that time frame, they just uh, could financially uh, state that it was okay for them to uh, sponsor myself and one trainer, and that was Ray Cronister with me down in Tucson in 85. Unfortunately, we showed the need for two because Ray just couldn't be available the, the 15, 16 hours a day, and the players needed somebody 15, 16 hours a day. So after they saw the worth of Ray uh, in Tucson, the USHA agreed to have both Ray and Kevin. Uh, from starting in Houston in 86, and we've been uh, doing it since 1986. Well, that if you want to say common injuries, I don't really look at them as injuries. I look at them as overstress problems, and I think that's good and, and says a lot about the sport. Uh, it's not an injury-producing sport in terms of uh, a lifelong threatening type injury such as you see in basketball to the knees and in football to the knees. I think the biggest thing at the Nationals is the factor that uh, uh, number one uh, unquestionably is physical conditioning. Uh, handball players are unique. It's one sport where they play the sport for the love of the sport. Unfortunately, they don't like to train outside the court for the sport they love. And so although a lot of them think they're in pretty good shape, physical shape, they are in decent physical shape for playing back at their club. But when it comes to coming to the Nationals, playing a lot more harder matches at a higher intensity and day after day, the factor comes out that individuals just aren't physically conditioned enough. The first thing to go is the legs. And when the legs go, the game goes. When the legs go, they don't get to the ball uh, properly to position themselves to shoot. And Next thing you knew, they're straining the muscles of their shoulders and their elbows. And at the same time, they're overstressing their back. So we see more than anything else here a lot of aches and pains and overstress type problems. Uh, with the sport itself, if there are any injuries that are associated with the sport, one of them is 100% preventable, and that is eye injuries. And eye injuries are you know, associated with any sport that has a, a ball associated with it. And all players have to do is just wear lensed goggles. Now notice I said lensed and not just the goggles without the lens cap over the eye itself. The second area that, that is uh, re you know, related to the sport directly is, is the hand. And of course you have to stop and think, I should have hand problems. After all, I hit the ball with my hand. Uh, USHA is working on that to get a softer ball. And I think the players again are doing well in terms of seeing now they should perhaps wear two gloves. Also, again, the amount of impact they place on their hand is directly related to their physical conditioning, i.e., if they don't get to the ball adequately in time 
if they're not physically conditioned to get there and do this over and over and over again, they don't shoot correctly and they end up getting bone bruises, quote, quote. Well, the only thing I'd like to add is, again, to encourage players to do two things. Number one, to be in better physical shape before they try to come to the Nationals. And I don't, I'm not saying that sitting here saying like I'm, a, I'm a specimen of physical conditioning. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to come here and you want to do well, you're going to do your best by being the one individual that's in the best physical condition in your division. Uh, certainly, it doesn't show so much on Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but come down to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's a matter of attrition due to physical conditioning. And a lot of, a lot of the overstress problems, again, as I said, are associated with the factor. The individual just doesn't get to the ball fast enough to properly position themselves. I think that if players do that, properly phys physically condition themselves before coming to the Nationals, I think that if players are smart, we learn that they should wear lensed eye guards to prevent any eye injuries, that they can do everything that they can to protect themselves from problems that are associated with handball. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Speed. So the, uh, the first question I have is, uh, can you describe your relationship with uh, Tony Wanberg and how much he's helped you? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I can't, I can't explain in a couple of words. I'd write down probably a page or two pages of what he's done for us. Um, well, Tony Wante, I've been with them for about maybe about nine years now, and um, we're really close. He's always been supportive. He's been there whenever we need him. And um, it'll be, I mean, every town needs a Tony Wante, especially for kids. He, you know, he kept us out of gangs and because I grew up in a rough part of the neighborhood and um, gave us a chance to, to explore new territory because, I mean, all we knew was just Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, Montebello, like, you know, surrounding cities. And um, without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I give Tony. A lot, a lot, a lot of credit, especially, especially since he has to put up with all our pranks and all our mischief and all that. And um, he's a great man. Uh, do you think you're ready to, to win the nationals? You're, you're probably the youngest player ever. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you prepare? Well, I'm trying to just mentally. I mean, I know the physical parts there. It's all in your head now. I mean. I just try to keep tough and um, just keep slugging it out to the end. What do you think, Steve? Get on there for like 15, 30 minutes, and um, I do a little weight training and just play a lot of handball. Okay. We'll ask the question again. Uh, what do you think about the training regimen you have? To get ready to okay, my training um, consists of um, a little weight lifting. Try to do that maybe two or three times a week. And um, like when I go out to play handball in between games while I'm waiting, I'll um, get on the Stairmaster to warm up and I'll play a lot of handball, maybe about three or four hours at a time. And um, after I finish, I'll either do a little weightlifting or Stairmaster, depending how I feel. Talk a little about Tony. Tell me about some of the other guys you played with, like uh, Vince. And okay. Well, yeah, well, Vincent Munoz and um, Richard. We've grown up playing and get, playing handball together in the same. Yeah, you know, I mean, Vince lives right down the street. Maybe. Well, we both lived on. All three of us lived on the same street, and um, we're just from the same neighborhood and been playing ball since ever since we we're like, what, 12 years old and so on. So I'm really close with them. I don't like to play them though. They know my game. <laughs> Okay, against John, I'm gonna try to expose his right if I the, mo the most I can. And um, I heard that left ball's pretty tough, so I'll be sneaking a few serves here and there down the left and um, try to catch him by surprise. Um, my best goal is just keep my composure. If I keep my composure, I'll, I think I'll do okay. And um, it's just the mental part. I mean, the Nationals, this is it. Oh. Anything you'd like to add? Anything that uh, you think that 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 you think
I'm using, I guess, handball as a stepping stone to pay my bills for school. I'm currently trying to become a fireman in Los Angeles City. I'm an explorer there. So um, who knows? I might not be around next year, depending because they're having tests this year. So I'm just waiting to see. Once I get on the job, then I'll take it from there.